Okay. Hi, I'm Mark. Um, uh, look, I'd like to preface this by noting that um, uh, this project was from for a, a young couple, and the couple undertook to do a lot of the construction themselves. Uh, they engaged me to do the design, but not to administer it. So I had to take that into consideration when designing the building, of course. So keeping it simple and simple construction technologies. Um, the site's located uh, in Neville Street in Carnegie. Uh, it's um, one of many dual occupancies that are consistent down the street. Uh, that's the site. Uh, it's a long, narrow site uh, with its orientation to the north. Um, the existing house, clinker brick house, typical of the era, uh, and, and of what's in the street. Um, it had some nice uh, internal details that were, um, you know, worth preserving and working with. Didn't form the fundamentals of how I designed the building, but um, you know, we certainly didn't get rid of them. Uh, the inside of the building, it was a solid um, brick home. Uh, we preserved the entirety of the existing footprint. Uh, the internal surfaces and materials, um, you know, obviously the building needed to be stripped out, insulated, rewired. It had to be underpinned. I tried to get them to hold onto the green bathtub, but no, I don't think there's enough green porcelain out there, but anyway. Uh, the backyard, um, the house had a poor connection with this lovely yard, which uh, was long, narrow, and deep, and had this wonderful tree. Uh, the clients have since um, you know, hung a, um, a swing on it. Uh, so that's the existing house plan, or rather I should say stage one of the existing house plan. The, uh, the house was completely gutted, and then the first few rooms were uh, decked out to be a master bedroom, living area, temporary kitchen, and a bathroom was done so the clients could live on site um, whilst they did a lot of the labor themselves, and then the builder was engaged to uh, attach an extension cleanly onto the back. Um, uh, given the program that they wanted, which was all new living areas and uh, additional bedrooms, et cetera, for a future family, uh, the building mass is two stories, and like I said, cleanly attached onto the building. Uh, we pulled it off its side boundaries, mainly to avoid you know, uh, interactions with uh, one of the neighbors in particular was quite prickly, uh, but also just to avoid some in-ground services and stuff, so we pulled it in. Then we cantilevered the uh, back section of the first area. The backs of the ground floor and first floor are, are mainly living areas, and that's was to provide um, you know, a, a, a sculptural strength to the back facade and um, to create a covered area at the back. Um, uh, this, this, the, the spatial relationships between the inside and the outside of the building, the purple, uh, the vertical light shaft over the stairs, and it links the three wings of the building. So there's the front um, formal master bedroom area, the ground area living, and then upstairs the, uh, I guess you'd call it the children's zones, bedrooms, and playroom. The red, which was a cross axis on the ground floor, uh, right through the main living area, the kitchen and the meals area, and that permeates natural uh, eastern and western light into the building. And then the green and the blue upstairs and downstairs in the main living areas that I wanted to extend out into the backyards. This then created the uh, window uh, penetrations into the main building masses, but this creates an overlooking problem. And what I didn't want to do was I didn't want to have to um, uh, um, screen or use opaque glass or anything like that. So. I kinked the back facade, and that rotated the overlooking cones inward, which I don't know why I hadn't thought of that before, but uh, that's uh, uh, quite an interesting idea, I thought, uh, and led to an interesting shape on the back facade. Uh, then I worked out where the angles of the, of the upper floor of the rear facade uh, could merge into a concave curve, and that created a dominant centralized curb picture frame uh, window up above. The concave shape, I think, is really interesting. I'm, doing a lot of work on researching curves and things. Uh, concave, uh, the concave creates a space that encloses the visitors in from the side. From the outside, rather than acting as a facade that deflects or shies away from engagement, the building is hollowed out so the onlooker is drawn into it. And from within, behind the curved facade, the onlooker's eye is drawn inwards to an implied enclosed space, like the arms reaching around it. Um, then the masses were you know, further articulated, mainly for drainage and, and um, other things, but just to emphasize um, that particular feature of the, of the building. Um, so the new extension, it, it fits quite comfortably on the, on the site, goes a little bit further back than the other houses, but comfortably enough to leave a decent-sized backyard. Um, the clients, they were committed to energy, uh, solar energy, and installed a lot of solar panels on the roof, and that subsequently heated up the concrete slab. 
Um, to date, their electricity bills are in the single digits, which is terrific given what's happened over the last little while. Um, and the plan of the building, the front entrance was uh, uh, moved back um, from the walk-in road, which is where it really originally was, but back in here so that there are three distinct uh, wings to the building. Um, and the entrance is signified also um, by the curve around the laundry. Um, the front being the parents' wing, the back being the living space with linear kitchen, and then upstairs bedrooms, and then the family room. Uh, the elevations were rationally disciplined to accommodate cement sheet and nail strip. All of that had to be installed by, we didn't want to have to get specialist installers out, so the carpenters and the owners, um, I think the owners ended up doing the rendering. The carpenters put the nail strip up. Uh, the sections uh, note the split level, uh, you know, the cantilever, which is the main feature, and also the vertical spaces of the void. And to kind of lock the clients in, I produced some, you know, I typically do these sorts of images, I'm sure everybody does now, but in particular, I, I, I wanted them to um, uh, see what, uh, the, 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 what the important aspects of the building were. This was also issued to the builder, so the, uh, the, uh, the rear facade, um, the uh, open staircase, steel staircase, and uh, um, uh, the uh, open spaces using very, um, you know, simple and basic materials, just polished concrete, uh, simple laminex, um, Caesar stone. I mean, the kitchen joinery in the end was installed by Freedom Furniture, uh, all to keep the budget down for, for this young couple. Uh, this is the main view of the back of the building, obviously at dusk, showing how it penetrates in. And then during the day, we start to get um, uh, you know, a different sense of quality and different sense of reflection off of the glass, which I, I find quite interesting. Again, looking up from it, again, you get these reflections in the glass. And then at different times of the day, depending on the angle, et cetera, the play of light's quite lovely on this simple element. Uh, that's the curved wall entering into the, uh, you know, the main entry area and looking up into the staircase. Um, that was one of the front bathrooms that um, uh, we fixed out, both of them have skylights. We just worked around the existing framing to create these uh, light shafts from above. Um, I always like to get as much natural light and ventilation into a bathroom, obviously. I think most of us probably do. Um, that's the staircase. The, the stair was designed to be fabricated by a steel fabricator, so the steel portion goes in, then it's used as a working stair throughout the build, negates the necessity of temporary stairs or ladders, etc. Uh, and then near the end of the build, it's painted up, and then the uh, pre-polished treads are put down, and uh, the glass balustrade was hung. The balustrade's actually hung uh, off of the beam above, and then it's just pinned onto the sides. Um, the handrail is a feature that I often like to, to put into buildings, particularly if I have the stair as this linking element that links all the spaces in the building together. At nighttime, I've done it on my own house, the only light that has to be on at night is that light. And you can see all the way from the living area, all the way to the front room, and then all the way up to the top. Um, sorry? Oh, one minute. Oh, shit. OK. Um, details on the stairs. Um, stairs. Again, the transition of the split level, um, um, polished, polished concrete. Um, just looking through the stair and up the skylight well. And then out the back, and you can see the uh, reflection of the linear window opposite uh, in, in that space, and the seating, 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 the kitchen area, the linear kitchen, looking out the back, you can see the tree, and back into that. Then upstairs, we get that curved facade, uh, interesting sort of angle looking inside and out. Um, and then looking, looking out onto the tree, and then at dusk, the quality of it changes, obviously. And then from the other side, during the day, um, a nice outlook, but preventing you from looking hard out onto the sides with, with those wings and then onto that curved piece of glass. And then again at dusk, I apologize for the, the photograph, but at nighttime, it all becomes completely trans, uh, tra opaque and you get these fantastic reflections. It was tricky to get a photograph of it. That's actually me <laughs> behind the distortion. Uh, and then at nighttime, obviously, it, it just all opens up. 